Hey guys, my name is Nala Ayed. I'm a foreign correspondent with the CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And I'm here today to talk to you about a really special assignment that I just came off of. It was nine days aboard a rescue ship called the Responder, and it was working off the coast of Libya, rescuing asylum seekers at sea. As you probably have heard in the news, it's one of the deadliest routes for asylum seekers in the world at sea. More than 3,800 people have died on that route this year, and thousands of people try to make that crossing from Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, all the way to Europe. So we had a chance, we were invited um, to be on this ship. We were there for nine full days. And we've made a documentary on our time there and the, a day full of rescues that we witnessed. Um, if you want to watch that, the link just right there. So take a look at that. In the meantime, I've asked um, people who've watched and listened to our material to send in questions both on Twitter and on Facebook. And we'll obviously we're open to more questions, but I have a few here that I'd like to answer. So let's get started. I haven't watched yet, but did you save anybody? Well, I didn't save anybody. We were there as observers, but um, they did save 324 people in one day while we were on the ship. And I should mention that the 324 that were saved on this ship that day were actually the first of 11,000 who were saved in the days that followed. So it was quite a busy period. And now a question from someone with the name of Spooky Jarl. Um, I was wondering what effect this work has on the rescuers. What sort of emotional toll does this leave with the workers? Well. As you can imagine, it's not an easy topic for rescuers to talk about. We did address it with Nick Romaniak, who's the Canadian uh, born in the UK, and with uh, others. And they do acknowledge that it is difficult watching just the ordinary rescues, the people looking desperate and stunned when they got on board. Never mind that, but they've also had some very difficult rescues in the past few weeks. One rescuer, Nick, talked about being called over to a boat where five people were unconscious. He did CPR and tried to revive them, but every single one of them died. He says that when he's on the job, it's not something that he thinks about, but when he stops, that's when kind of all those memories come back and it does take an emotional toll. More questions. Darren Blaney uh, says, how does everybody get fed? Well. It's not an easy thing to do on a ship like this, of course, with that many people. There isn't a kitchen big enough to actually cook food. So the idea is to just try to sustain these people until they get them to Europe. And so they hand out on very regular intervals, biscuits, cereal bars for breakfast, and obviously water. Now, a lot of people ask me what these asylum seekers bring with them on this journey. It's, this is probably a good moment to explain that this journey on the sea from the coast of Libya trying to get to Europe is actually the last leg of what is a much more harrowing, much more difficult journey on land where people from all over Africa, Middle East, Asia make their way over to Libya to try to get smuggled by sea over to, uh, to Europe. But, you know, they do bring some things. There were men who still had their wallets. There was one man who had actually a smartphone. And one of the first questions he asked was whether there was Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi, but it, it can't sustain um, too many people on it. A lot of them bring cigarettes, lighters. Lighters are taken away because that's a fire hazard, obviously. One guy I saw was wearing a pendant. Uh, it said, all things are possible with God. Otherwise, people didn't have much, and most people didn't have shoes. It's why that when they arrive in Italy, one of the first things they get from the Red Cross workers there is a pair of flip-flops. So the next question is from Jana Kaplan. What will happen to these refugees once in Italy? Well, we got to watch some of that um, process. And essentially, first, obviously, the Red Cross um, receives them. They provide them with clothing. They house them in these centers, these holding centers, while they get documented. And then, ultimately, they have to go through the immigration system in Italy. So either they will claim asylum in Italy and hope to get some kind of status there, or some of them actually will just get documented. And their hope is to get beyond Italy. A large number of the people we met and watched on that ship will probably be rejected as asylum seekers because they are not fleeing conflict, they are uh, looking for economic opportunity, and that is not considered um, in most countries in the region a reason enough to be given asylum. So they will be rejected. As to whether they actually get deported is another question. Often they just melt away into the population. Now, Farah F. is asking a question, what proportion of them tried the legal way to immigrate? 
first before resorting to taking a book? It's a really good question, Farah. Um, I don't know because I didn't ask that question to all of them. But what I can say from my own experience is that it is really difficult to go through that process uh, in many of these places that people are from. So um, they do look for alternate ways to try to find a way to Europe or elsewhere. So um, I don't know how many, but I suspect not very many. There's a question from Jennifer Penny. She says, can you speak to the gender and age of people? The majority were men. 40 of those on board were women. Most of the people on board were quite young. We didn't meet a single person who was over 35. I have a question from Paul Forseth. Did they, meaning the rescuers, he says, did they actually do long-term good? It's a really good question. Um, I think almost to the one, the rescuers that I spoke to felt that they were doing the right thing because they felt the important thing where they were in that spot off the coast of Libya, Libya was to save lives and not to think about what happens afterwards, but just to ensure that people are not dying at sea. In fact, that's the motto of MOAS, and that, that is that no one deserves to die at sea. So they separate the question of saving lives from the politics of this or what happens afterwards. Long term, as I mentioned, a lot of these people will be rejected. Whether they get deported or not, that's another question. It's a complicated situation, but maybe we have to wait a few years before we know the answer to that. A question from Menaka Raymond Wilms. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but a name that's very familiar on my Twitter feed, a very smart one, young woman. Um, are people better off being rescued by rescue ships than European Coast Guards? Are they processed or treated differently? They're not. Anybody who is rescued at sea is brought to Italy. That's where they get documented and then they get processed. They can claim asylum. There's no difference between the ships. A question from Kareem Moshani. Uh, what fraction of people fleeing by boat were political refugees versus economic migrants? I don't know. Um, it's not up to us to decide who would qualify as a political refugee or not. But I will say that there's a mix. There, there are people who have come you know, like a man by the name of Fakhreddin I met from Eritrea who had been imprisoned four times, four times under the, the regime there. Inexplicably, he says that the, he doesn't know why he was imprisoned. This happens quite often in Eritrea. But we also met people who have come from very poor environments, um, people from Bangladesh, people from Nigeria, who may not be fleeing a full-on conflict, but who are leaving because of extremely dire, difficult situations where there's high unemployment, very few prospects for jobs, and essentially difficult to make a living. So thanks very much, everybody, for sending in your questions. And I just want to remind you that there is a, a documentary that we've made called Saved at Sea. The link is just right there. Please take a look. And in the meantime, if you do have other questions or comments, please send them in because we will try to get to as many of them as possible. Thanks very much.